so Arsenal have been linked with a move for Turkish midfielder Ozjan Erzicu, who is currently in the final year of his contract at Besiktas, who he joined from Arsenal back in 2012 for just €500,000. The Gunners have been linked with a £10 million move for Ozzy as a replacement for Mesut Ozil, so with talk of Arsenal re-signing a player they let go for practically nothing, let's take a look at six other players that clubs re-signed for big money after being let go. We start things off with Peter Crouch. In 2009, Tottenham spent £10 million on Peter Crouch after the beanpole striker had been on fire for Portsmouth, linking up brilliantly with Jermaine Defoe. Crouchy spent two seasons at White Hart Lane, where his most important moment came at the Etihad where he scored the goal that guaranteed Champions League football for Spurs the following term, a goal that made him worth every penny of the £10 million he cost. It wasn't the striker's first spell with Tottenham though, having joined as a youngster in 1998. He never made a first team appearance for the club before joining QPR in 2000, but his journey in the next 9 years made him the man he was when he returned to Spurs, and he probably wouldn't be the player he turned out to be had he not left Spurs in the year 2000. And anyway, they got their money back when they sold him to Stoke in 2011, so win-win. Next up is Alan Shearer. Technically we're cheating here, but stay with us. It cost Newcastle United a then world record £15 million to sign local hero Alan Shearer in 1996 after the striker had made his name at Southampton and then Blackburn Rovers where he won the title. While Shearer was never actually a Newcastle player before 1996, the Magpies did pay the price for not getting him sooner after Shearer had a trial with the club as a 15 year old before he moved down south and became a Southampton player. Considering he scored a club record 206 goals for the club, the £15 million price tag was a small price to pay really but he could have scored even more had he been snapped up by the Magpies after his trial, although he probably never would have won the Premier League title, so swings and roundabouts really. At 4 we've got Nemanja Matic. The Serbian midfielder was a key component in both the 2015 and 2017 Premier League title wins for Chelsea, acting as a shield in front of the Blues defence to allow the likes of Eden Hazard to flourish ahead of him. However, Matic came at a cost that the club could have avoided. He first joined the club in 2009 for £1.5 million and would make two Premier League appearances in his first season before going on loan to Chelsea's feeder club Vitesse Arnhem, much like so many other Chelsea youngsters have done. In January 2011, Chelsea completed a deal to sign Brazilian centre-half David Luiz from Benfica for £21 million, a deal that also saw Matic go the other way and head to Portugal. Three impressive years in Lisbon saw Matic develop into the holding midfielder he is today, and by January 2014 he returned to Stamford Bridge, costing them £21 million. Now with Manchester United, Chelsea are a much worse team without the 29 year old. Our third player is Nicholas Anelka. The forward joined PSG in 1995 and made 10 league loan appearances for the club before he joined Arsenal in February 1997 at the age of 17 with new Gunners boss Arsene Wenger tapping into his French connections to sign the forward for just £500,000. Anelka's goals for the Gunners earned him a move to Real Madrid for 22.3 million quid, but after just a year at the Bernabeu they made a loss on the Frenchman as they headed back to PSG for £22 million, 21.5 million million more than the Paris club sold him for three and a half years earlier. The second spell wasn't too fruitful either as he fell out with coach Luis Fernandez and Anelka went on to play for basically everyone, from Man City to Mumbai, from Bolton to Shanghai. At 2 we've got Cesc Fabregas. The Barcelona Youth Academy has produced a long list of top class talent, but not all players get their chance, which is why Cesc Fabregas left for absolutely nothing in 2003 and joined Arsenal, where there was a chance of more opportunities under Arsene Wenger. The Spaniard quickly rose through the ranks and into the first team, learning from great midfielders such as Patrick Vieira, before eventually going on to become the Arsenal skipper. However, Throughout Fabregas' stellar years with Arsenal, there was always noise that Barca wanted him back, made all the more loud by the fact that Fabregas would link up with his Spain teammates and Barcelona stars for international duty, with the likes of Iniesta, Piqué and co putting the Arsenal man in a Barca shirt, despite still being a gunner. In 2011, Fabregas eventually did return to the new camp, costing £35 million and often playing out of position, going on to win La Liga, a Copa del Rey, two Super Cups, a European Super Cup and a Club World Cup. And at number one, it's Paul Pogba. £89 million is what Paul Pogba cost Manchester United last summer. It was a world record move that turned heads across football, as the fees for footballers continue to rise and have gone up even more ever since. But while Pogba's transfer was a record at the time, it was even more significant considering who he was joining and where he'd been previously in his career. The Frenchman signed for Manchester United for £89 million in the summer of 2016, seven years since he first joined the Red Devils as a youngster. 
After limited first team opportunities at Old Trafford, with other players getting the chances he should have been getting, Paul Pogba decided to call time on his Manchester United career, leaving for free in 2012 to join Italian giant Juventus. The midfielder's performances for Juve forced Man United to pay £89 million four years later, the most expensive mistake of Sir Alex Ferguson's career. So those are six players that clubs re-signed for big money after being let go. Let us know of any more in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.